there's do it. Okay, Thanks. Stu. I'll... Marlon. Okay, uh, this is slide number one. I just happen to still have a F3 that I had as a kid when I was about 12 or 13 years old. And it was the first thing I ever painted, which is a pretty crappy job, but it's still around. And and it's a 1950s model HO scale and it, it is, is made out of metal. So it, the whole daggone thing is heavy. Next, let's get it. Oh, okay. All right. When I retired about 20 years ago or so, I got back into model railroading and and uh, I've done a lot of painting and whatever. I, other than building a few T-track modules, that's about what I do. And uh, so in this one, we see um, a Monon caboose over there and a good old Monon RS2 that I painted and that um rider car or whatever they're called sitting behind the rs2 is this is a 3d printed type of thing that we did and then at the bottom i've got some of my passenger cars and some and this is all from here on out we're in the end scale go ahead Nick. yeah you, is that 3d printing is that from uh oh well that's the best too I guess from that guy you know? Or... Yeah, Paul Banks and I did a lot of Monon stuff along the way a few years ago. Um, CSX has a number of... Thomas, do you know how many heritage locomotives they've got out now? I've lost count because they, they've they got an L&N and, 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 and just the most... Re the, the second one in the picture on the bottom left over there is New York Central. Um, no, over the, the bottom left, the one behind it is the New York central heritage CSX has gotten into their heritage locomotives and they've got an L and N and they've got Atlantic coastline and, and, uh, Conrail and so forth and so on. But just here in the last few weeks, they came out with their Monon, uh, a version and reason why you see like in that previous slide all the monon stuff is because my grandparents lived a block from the monon railroad in new albany indiana so it was my first taste of model of of, of railroading and so when i saw that picture i just had to try to see if i could decal a, a locomotive so if you go to the next slide well no we'll get to the decal on it later just keep this in mind Uh, when RJC got their first GP 38-2s, which was, I took that picture up above down there at the shop on Thanksgiving Day, and I don't know what year it was, but it's been a long time ago. It was 3801 and 3802, the first ones, and of course I had to do a RJ Corman locomotive, so at the bottom you see my attempt to paint and decal on RJ Corman. Go ahead to the next one. And... R.J. Corman, of course, used to be big into rail power. They owned rail power. They bought it from a Canadian firm. And they used a lot of uh, gen sets on their lines around the country and whatever. And that picture up at the top uh, is a gen set that is up, well, used to be up in Ohio, up near Cleveland. And, of course, Paul and I had to create a, a gen set locomotive. So we took a frame from an old RS2 because it had to be lowered down because the long hood on them are, are rather low. So we created that locomotive and I painted and decaled that thing. And that was running with my uh, ingot train at the Midway layout a few years ago. Next one. And the one that I've got that I've tried to do now is the good old 
last year was Corman's 50th anniversary. And they've got a couple of SD 70 M's now that they have painted into that scheme with a 50th on the side and they used it on their derby training and they're using it on a lot of the stuff that runs on the, the road between Lexington and Louisville these days, but they've also got a couple of GPs that they're using now over in Bargetown on their dinner train, which is a top picture. You can see the dinner train behind the locomotives. And uh, that's about as far as I've gotten on that project. Uh, they, one of the tricky things on something like that, as you can see that on the, the real one up there at the top, there's a thin red line inside the edge of the gray, which is a pain in the whatever when you're doing decaling. So I haven't got around to that yet. So you can go on to the next slide. Um, also, besides the Monon and Corman, I'm also kind of into the U.S. sugar line down at Lewiston, Florida. So when they got a steam locomotive down there, I had to get one and and um, their steam locomotive actually that they're running on excursions now has that U.S. sugar with we raised cane on the tender. And over here in the, my passenger car that I painted, which is like one of their passenger cars, you can hardly see it. But right above the window there, it says U.S. sugar on it, which is a handmade. I mean, I, I made that decal myself and put it on there. I've got me a three car set like what they run in their excursions. Uh, next one. And then down there in the U.S. Sugar, uh, they've got a whole lot of yellow hopper cars. And so I had to do, a, I got three or four of them. And so I had to do my own custom decaling, uh, made my own decals and whatever and so forth to try to get as close as I could to the, to the real thing. Um, how do you make your own decal? We'll get there. I've got that in here. I'm just I'm just getting you going so you'll be interested when we get there, I guess. Okay. Next slide. Um good old Florida East Coast. Uh the picture up at the top of a real train isn't really somebody photoshopped that thing. You can see the, the second locomotive. Behind the uh, LNG, the LNG tender is the way most of the locomotives down there are painted. But after Grupo Mexico bought the Florida East Coast, they have painted two of their GPs into that scheme that you see and that's been photoshopped onto that locomotive up there. And so I had to have one of them. So you can see my model down here at the bottom my blue color is a little bit lighter than it should be, but uh, basically I, I, I went with, with their GP scheme and did that. And then the black locomotive back there is a Canadian National Heritage locomotive that they painted for the Illinois Central. And that one was relatively easy because it's all black, which is something that the IC like to do on their locomotives. And, um, uh, so I got me a Norfolk Southern and, and used paint remover on it and got rid of all of the Norfolk Southern locos and it was already all black. So then I decaled it. So go ahead and next screen. Okay, and this is some of the other stuff that I've done over the years. Up at the very top left is a attempt on my part to create a hydrogen powered locomotive, which Canadian Pacific now has three of out of Calgary. Um, then to the right of that is uh, is one of their, well, all of the rest of these, except for the two on the bottom, are uh, SD-70 ACUs, which are rebuilt SD-90s. And so when they started rebuilding their SD-90s into AC-70 ACUs, and they came out with a, um, military tribute locomotives. And so uh, the one up there with the bottom is the Navy because the bottom of naval ships are that color. 
The one over here on the second layer down is a, uh, that's the Air Force. And then the yellow one is supposed to be, it looks yellow in the picture, but it's really more of a sand color. Uh, it's for the um, Desert Sand Army in the United States and whatever. And then this one over here is a good old NATO green. But they've got five of those, one locomotive that, was painted like the airplanes that were used by the allies in World War II that had the white and black stripes on the wings so that they could be identified so that they wouldn't get shot down over, you know. They've got a fifth locomotive that has that on the rear end that I haven't done yet. Then the Canadian Pacific came out with uh, this orange one down there. Uh, which has something to do with, I don't see where I say, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a Every Child Matters locomotive is what's in white on the, near the cab on that one. And then the Canadian Pacific and the Kansas City Southern, they merged together. I guess it's been a, it's been over a year now. And so before they even came out with their new paint scheme, I had to make up my own. So I got me a locomotive and painted it and got the three flags of the three countries on there and created my own CPK, CD cows and whatever and and uh, went with that. Then uh, CSX 911, which is a locomotive that CSX has that honors our uh, first responders. Uh, I decaled that baby and we actually ran it down there in Ravenna's railroad day in the shop that Thomas was talking about a little while ago. Uh, that was lots of fun because of the white stripes and all that good stuff on it. And most of my models, I get my decals either from micro scale or highball graphics or Circus City decals or CMR products. It just depends on who's got what available at the time that I need some. I prefer micro scale because their decals seem to work better as far as coming off the paper and going on and whatever. I've had some problems with CMR products because they do, uh, I mean, you try to take them off the paper and they'll curl under and, and it's lots of fun. Um, go ahead to the next. Uh, when I'm painting a model, uh, sometimes when I have to remove lettering or all of the paint when it's not a undecorated model to start with, I've used these, which is early ELOs. Testers has some, and then there's another brand over here, which I think works a little bit better than Testers. But the ELO stands for easy lift off, which is not true, but it does work. All right, next slide. And then... When I do my painting and whatever, most of the time, if I can get a spray color, which is close to it, that's made by this T-A-M-I-Y-A outfit, that's a Japanese company. They, uh, they make the best spray paint that I've ever used on models. And then they also make uh, masking tape, which you see in that picture. And their masking tape, you know, when you're dealing with a locomotive and you have to get it down in all the little grooves and over the radiators and all that stuff so it doesn't run when you do your spraying and whatever, uh, their, their masking tape works great. I'm doing something wrong over here. Okay. Sorry about that. And then I put in there a paintbrush and the scissors that I used to cut my my uh, decals out with and the scissors came from the hospital when I had my bypass surgery in 2006. And when I was checking out of the hospital, they said, hey, you paid a bunch of money for these. Would you like to have these scissors? Well, heck yes. They were mine. So I've been using them ever since to cut decals with. Next slide. All right. This is uh, not my stuff, but there's a guy I know down in Florida that 3D prints in scale, bright line locomotive shells and passenger cars. And this is an example of him decaling the passenger cars. And what I thought was interesting about it, he uses testers clear decal paper, which is what I also use when I make my own. 
And he printed those on inkjet printers, which uh, the problem with inkjet is that, of course, it comes out and you've got to make sure you let the ink dry before you spray it because you then have to coat it with uh, with some kind of clear coating and before you put it in the water to cut the decal to decal it and and i was really interested and i've never tried this because one of the problems with doing your own decals is that there is no such thing as white ink on a printer and so i was curious to know how he got like the orlando on that bottom passenger car to show up in white and he said well he just paints the car white in the first place and the decal that he makes, which is one continuous decal all the way down the side of the cars, uh, then the white shows through when he uses clear decal paper. Uh, Testers uh, has both clear decal paper and, and white back decal paper. And I suppose you could do the same kind of a thing with the white back, but I haven't tried that yet. But that's interesting. I just thought I'd throw that in because this guy's pretty good at it. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a photo I took of the front of the outside of the decal paper. Uh, it says testers up at the top, which got cut off when I put it on the on the slide. Um, it, I haven't. I mean, I use uh, Microsoft Publisher when I do the lantern every month. And so when I do my own decaling and whatever thing, since I'm real familiar with Publisher, as far as doing different font sizes and stuff like that, I use Publisher, but I'm sure that Microsoft Word would work just as good if you wanted to create decals. I don't, I think Microsoft Word's got probably all the same power that Publisher has as far as font sizes and putting pictures and cropping them and all that kind of good stuff. Next slide, please. This is a this is something that I took from uh, CMR products. No, no, I'm sorry. This I copied this slide from highballgraphics.com, which is another decal manufacturer that that rather than going through and reading all these things, um, I probably should put them out on the internet sometime for you if you're interested. But but one of the things that he mentioned in here that I hadn't been doing in all my years, I was just using just plain old water that I let sit out and got to room temperature. And he mentioned that you need to put it in warm water. Well, recently I've tried the warm water and the decals do come off better in warm water than they do in in cooler water. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of good, I mean, you can go out yourself to highballgraphics.com and copy this if you ever want to get interested into it, but it's one of the best set of instructions that I've seen. Uh, Microscale, which also has instructions on the back of their envelopes, says that they recommend you just take the Diagon decal and set it on a wet pepper towel until the decal will come off. I've always submerged my decals into water I've never tried the white paper towel thing. But anyway, go on to the next slide, please. Uh, and I mean, it, you know, positioning and all that stuff, it can be lots of fun. Um, you need some kind of setting solution and moving the decals around and getting them in the right spot and all of that good is, is part of the fun of trying to decal your own stuff. Um, the don't rush at the very bottom is very important. And you've got to, uh, you know, make sure you don't touch the daggone decals until the, the decals dry with the setting solution on them. But if you ever have to move a decal after it gets in on there, putting some more setting solution on it, usually will let you move it some more. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a, another project that I recently worked on. Uh, <clears throat> Wabtech, which is now the owner of GE Transportation, has created a all battery locomotive. And they call it the FLX drive battery powered. And I found that there was a guy out there on the internet who does 3D printing of the 
FLX drive locomotives. And so I ordered one. And when I took it out of the box, that's the way it looked there at the very top. And then after I, I, I didn't realize when you do 3D printing that you get all those kinds of good old supports on, on whatever you've got. But anyway, that's the way it came to me. And then I took it off. And then at the bottom, you can see what the locomotive looks like after it's been removed off of its, whatever those supports are called. Next slide, please. Then the Florida East Coast has now, being that they're owned by Grupo Mexico, which also owns uh, Ferromex in Mexico and Ferrol Sur in Mexico. Uh, Ferromex has painted some of their locomotives in a scheme that's just about like what they're now putting onto the Florida East Coast locomotives, except that they have a bright red tab on the front, the rear with the gray and the dark gray stripes. Um, is just about the same as what Grupo Mexico is using in Mexico. But um, this is the first paint job that came out of the Florida East Coast paint shop. And of course, as soon as I saw that, I had to try it. Um, and the, 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 the green leaf that you see down there has something to do with environmental stuff. And I'm not sure exactly why, but one thing about Florida East Coast locomotives is that they run on liquefied natural gas, so they are let, less polluting than the old diesel engines that all the rest, rest of the railroads have. And I guess that's just to give you an indication that they're a little bit more eco-friendly. Uh, next one, please. This is, then I took the locomotive and just to show you in the modeling, I painted the whole daggone thing gray, the light gray, and then I put masking tape over it so that I could paint the front end of it blue. And then I took some of that good old masking tape that I showed you in a previous slide and stuck over there so then I could put the dark gray on it. And then I had a decal set from Florida East Coast on some other locomotives that I used on the side. And the reason why it says 3000 is because that's the number of the locomotive that Wabtec has. And this is totally fantasy stuff for me because the Florida East Coast does not have that locomotive, but I at least have one now with their paint scheme. Next slide, please. And there it is in the finished with the with the trucks on it and everything else on my one of one of my T-track modules. Uh the decals for the 3000 and the, the one up on the front on the cab and so forth came from CMR products and the, the Florida East Coast is from Circuit City decals. Next slide. Then we get back to the good old CSX Heritage locomotive that you saw in a slide up front, which was 1897. And there's my model of it. And the up at the top, uh, I happen to already have a micro scale Monon freight locomotive decal set. So as soon as I saw the picture that you saw up, you know, previously of the actual uh, heritage locomotive, uh, that was a case where I put the the decals on the left side up there go on the rear end, and then the stripe is from the decal stripe, and then. This is the first time I think I've tried to actually put another decal over the top of a decal, which the Monon on it is decaled on top of a decal, which worked out without any trouble at all. And then I had to come up with a number set for 1897 on, on my own and whatever. And, and sometimes when you have to take a decal paper or set with just digits on it, you have to cut them out one at a time and try to get them to where they look straight. Next, sl next slide. Now, we're about to get finished. Um, Lou Jackwith, which is a member of our club, and he wanted to come today, but his refrigerator died this morning, so he had to go out and buy a new refrigerator this afternoon, so he was not able to attend. But he uh, is now working on a SD70M, which the Paducah in Louisville has, and the PL has a... 
PAL has acquired some SD78s from Union Pacific, and, and he's trying to paint one up so that the management at PAL will paint one as a heritage locomotive into IC. And this is basically an old photo from an old uh, GP9 or something like that, which is what he's trying to do. Um, so go to the next slide. And there's a picture at the top of what the SD70Ms look like on the PAL now, which all they did was paint out Union Pacific and put their PAL on it. Uh, this is the, um, he's in, this is HO scale now. He got a undecorated SD70M set from Athern. And all of the, as you can see, after he got it taken apart, all of the fans, the radiators, the grilling, everything was all separate. Whenever I've worked with undecorated end scale stuff, it, at least it came <laughs> put together. So if you go to the next slide, uh, he hasn't finished it yet, but this is the progress that he's at right now. He's got the grab irons installed and he's got the, 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 uh, Oh yeah, he's got some of the fans for the radiators up there. That's his tape. He's just holding them on at the time. But basically, I mean, if you've all been to Lou's layout in his basement, uh, back before the Paducah and Louisville Railroad was formed and they bought the line from Paducah to Louisville from the in Illinois Central, he already had Paducah and Louisville locomotives on his layout. And he contacted management at the Paducah and Louisville Railroad when they acquired the, the railroad line and said, hey, I've got your paint scheme for you. And they actually used it. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner is on his layout, some of the locomotives that he had that he painted himself. And so he's in with management at the PAL. So he may be able to pull it off after he gets his heritage locomotive. You see over here finished that I mean, it's basically just trying to convince management that they need to do one like his model when he gets done with it. And um, I mean, that's as far as he's gotten so far. So we'll try to keep you up to date on how that works out as we go down the road. And basically, that's it. Anybody got any? Yes, sir. Did he tell you how many locomotives? You mentioned one time. 